I think, first of all, if you look at uh, retail spending, um, you know, the Michigan Consumer Confidence Index rebounded very strongly indeed. Um, a subsector of that index, obviously, is the Inflation Expectations Index, and I think one area where uh, the Fed probably is quite disappointed is that that Inflation Expectations Index over the next year actually rose back to 4.2%. So whereas that had been declining over the last three to four months, we've now got a reversal in inflation expectations upwards, i.e. the wrong direction. Um, in terms of retail spending, I think one key factor is the drop, and this applies equally to Europe as well, um, is the drop in energy prices. If you look, for example, at you know, US oil prices, prices at the pump, US gas prices, they are very low indeed. So that is really helping to boost consumer confidence. Um, we saw very strong labor market figures, um, and that strength actually was driven mainly by the service sector. And I think one thing that's interesting in the States at the moment um, is the recovery in the service sector, but the manufacturing sector so far is lagging. So in a way, we have a sort of two-track US economy. The overall picture, however, is I think very clearly the probability of a US recession, I would argue this year, is now very low indeed. And you know, I wouldn't be at all surprised if we see progressively more and more upward revisions to uh, U.S. growth. What does that mean for markets then? Because we were just chatting as, as Karen was uh, running across some of those numbers from the walls that in terms of the earnings yield from the S&P, it looks a lot like the return on a six-month Treasury. So why would you own equities at this point in the U.S.? Well, I think the upside on U.S. equities is now very challenged indeed. Um, and you know what we've seen in recent weeks is that every time the S&P tries to get above 4,100, and we, of course, at one stage over the last couple of weeks, we got up to around uh, 4,180, I think, was the recent peak, and then we fail there. So, you know, it hits a wall of profit taking, and now we're back down below. 4,100. And if one looks at, let's say, the next two to three months as we go into April and May, um, I think we're in a sideways moving market, potentially a, a little bit of a skew to the downside. And, um, you know, obviously, if one makes precise forecasts, the risk is you're wrong. But having said that, I think a trading range on the S&P of 3,800, potentially a maximum of just over 4,100. So a sideways moving market upside, I think, is now very limited.